Welcome to the AP Drawing Portfolio. I'm Colleen Harrigan and I teach at Clarkstown South High School in West Nyack, New York. In addition to teaching AP, I'm also a consultant, a question leader for the exam, and a former development committee member. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about demystifying synthesis in the AP Art and Design rubrics. After this lesson, you'll be able to understand how artwork can demonstrate self skillful synthesis of materials, processes, and ideas. We'll look at examples of AP portfolios that show successfully integrated materials, processes, and ideas. Strategies to support thinking and making through skillful synthesis will be discussed. These criteria are considered in both scoring rubrics, emphasizing their importance for portfolio success. Samples of contemporary artists and designers will highlight studio practices and provide an opportunity to further study the concept of synthesis in visual art. Okay, so we're going to have a little warm up. Uh, I want you to be thinking about your definition of synthesis in art. What does that mean to you? And for this short exercise, you'll need something to write with and a piece of paper. So I'll give you a moment to gather your materials. So let's think about the skills that you have developed this year in making art. We're going to draw three circles on this piece of paper. They don't have to be perfect. They're gonna be a little bit larger than a quarter, maybe about the size of a roll of scotch tape, if that gives you an idea. All right, so there's one circle. Remember, yours don't have to be perfect. And then I want you to draw a second one about the same size. It's not necessary to match the first exactly. And draw one more for a total of three. All right, so you have three circles. Let's label each circle starting at the left. We're going to label the, that one materials. And I want you to think about the materials you've used this year. And the AP definition of materials in the scoring rubric says materials are physical substances used to make works of art and design. The middle circle will be processes. Processes, uh, many process words end in ing, like painting and layering and stitching. And the Rubric definition says processes are physical and conceptual activities involved with making works of art and design. And our last circle is ideas. And the definition in the rubric says ideas are concepts used to make works of art and design. Okay, so that's what you've been doing in class. So my question is, how does a work show synthesis between materials, processes, and ideas? How do you know that you have synthesis? All right. Let's make another sketch and try and figure that out. All right. So below that drawing or on the back of the paper, we're going to make a new sketch. And we're going to use three circles again about the same size. We're going to put one at the top. We're going to draw one overlapping the first down to the left. And we're going to draw one more circle overlapping the first and second on the right. Let's use the same terms as the first drawing. The first circle can be materials. The second circle can be processes. And the third can be ideas. Okay, now, where they come together, where they coalesce, where they integrate. This is synthesis. So how do you know when you fully integrate materials, processes, and ideas? Let's think about that as we move along in this lesson. The AP definition for synthesis means a coalescence slash integration of materials, processes, and ideas. 
Maybe you've never heard of co coalescence before. Maybe your teacher hasn't used that term before. Coalescence is the joining or merging of elements to form a whole. Uh, maybe you understand integration, the action or process of integrating, combination, incorporation, or unification. These all relate to synthesis. So what do you need to know now that we have this activity underway? This is the key. The choices of materials, processes, and ideas used in a work are crucial. The relationship of these components within a work affects our understanding of the work. And students should make deliberate, clear visual connections among materials, processes, and ideas to show the synthesis of these components. In the course and exam description, this is addressed through course skills 2D, making through practice experimentation and revision, where you make works of art and design that demonstrate 2D, 3D, or drawing skills. And in skill 3E, under communication and reflection, where you describe how works of art and design demonstrate 2D, 3D, or drawing skills. So we have the 2D skills and the drawing skills. Here are the 2D. And then the drawing skills. And then 3E describes how works of art and design demonstrate 2D, 3D, or drawing skills. Let's think a minute about the assessment of skills. Your portfolio scores are a final end of year summative assessment of your learning related to portfolio requirements and assessment criteria. Since portfolio scores are based on AP art and design rubrics, it's essential that the teacher and their students understand the scoring rubrics and are able to accurately apply them to assess portfolio work. So you have an end uh, assessment, but throughout the year, as students develop their portfolios, rubrics should be used as a, as a formative assessment criteria to give students feedback on how their work aligns with portfolio requirements and evaluation criteria. So we'll be talking about this today. In the sustained investigation, the new requirements uh, say, say that students must submit 10 digital images that demonstrate a sustained investigation through practice experimentation and revision, a sustained investigation of materials, processes, and ideas, and a synthesis of materials, processes, and ideas, along with drawing skills. And then the writing prompt below, where you state uh, the following, where you identify your questions, and you describe how your sustained investigation shows evidence of practice experimentation and revision guided by your questions. In the sustained investigation rubric, we are concerned with row C, materials, processes, and ideas. In row C, at the highest score point, you will find visual relationships among materials, processes, and ideas are clearly evident and demonstrate synthesis. In selected works, uh, section of the AP drawing portfolio exam, students must submit three digital images now that demonstrate drawing skills and a synthesis of materials, processes, and ideas, along with the writing prompts of ideas, materials, and processes, 100 characters maximum, including spaces. The sustained investigation rubric is holistic, and we find that uh, at the highest score point of five, uh, row B, the visual relationships among materials, processes, and ideas are clearly evident and demonstrate synthesis. Okay, so now let's look at some artwork. We're going to, going to go back to the sustained investigation and look at some samples and see those uh, student works that are at the highest level.
So you can find these student examples on the drawing homepage, and they were created at the 2019 AP reading. And for sustained investigation, there are eight samples. And today we're going to look at two of the eight. This is the first example. Uh, and I'm going to read an excerpt of the student's written evidence as we look at the images. The student's written evidence states that in my body of work, I allude to elemental forms God uses to make himself known. Manipulation of sediments, coffee grounds, and water samples are symbolic depictions of veils, a memorial of boundary or control. I create macrocosms through my process to depict universal and personal relations with God through demarcation. The use of raw mundane forms are representative of vulnerability and identify the body of work. So that's the first work. Here's the second. Here's the third. This is a PDF format that I'm scrolling through. Here's the fourth work. The fifth, along with details, you can see the student submitted details in some of these. The sixth. And some composite slides, as you see in number seven. Number eight. Number nine. I'm going to continue with an excerpt of the student's writing. This is symbolically represented through found water samples, sediment samples, and handcrafted charcoal. Materials and processes are derived from places where personal boundaries are present in physical atmospheres, such as creeks, pools, and ponds, and homes, to allude to the demarcation of communal boundaries. The physical process of collecting found materials as mediums to create these macrocosmic drawings continues throughout the body of work as a risked attempt to exhibit God's grace and power. So you can see the students submitted 15 images, but you also realize now with the new requirements, you will be required to submit 10 images. Here's the full text of the student's written evidence, and along with the scoring commentary. And we are most interested in this particular presentation on row C, which talks about the materials, processes, and ideas. And the sco scoring commentary states that synthesis is clearly evident in this portfolio as the relationships among materials, processes, and ideas are inseparably combined. As noted above, the student often worked in nature, gathering materials from the natural world in order to make work about that world, thoroughly integrating materials, processes, and ideas. The practice of making art in the environment of God's creation is seen in image 13 is further evidence of the student's desire to make meaningful art that is both closely tied to her own beliefs and an appetite to discover meaningful relationships through handmade drawing materials. So that's our first example of a sustained investigation that demonstrates synthesis. And here's our second. And again, I'll read an excerpt from the student's written statement. These pieces concentrate on the theme of isolation, 
which became a gradually increasing part of my life as I matured, induced by schoolwork that occupied more and more of my mind and the gray areas in my relationships. I experimented with contrasting dramatic dark and light values with a digital painting program, applying an imbalance of dark and light to emphasize the main idea of isolation. The first eight are subjective depictions of isolation. And we start the series here with a boy returning to a cluttered home at dusk. In pieces two and three, here's three, he plunges through the floorboards and into his anxiety where he attempts to revive the precious things and passions by conducting the graves. Four and five, here's image four and here's image five, to pick the most devastating moments of his youth. The boy realizes he's conducting a requiem, but still conducts until the waters overwhelm his ship and every last grave. The chains in five and six lead up to images seven through 10. A girl is suspended among other luxuries, setting the boy and her apart. Ten is a moment of solitude from learned helplessness. The student goes on to say that the last images, numbers 11 through 15, are more objective depictions of isolation in youthful life, leading back to the dawn. And again, you see this is an example with 15 images. And of course, this year you will only be required to submit 10. So let's just take a look at the commentary. Here's the full um, student written evidence, which I just read some excerpts from. And we're going down to row C to the materials, processes, and ideas. And the scoring commentary says, synthesis, the purposeful use of materials and processes to convey ideas as effectively as possible is not only achieved within the development of each image, but also in the portfolio as a whole. In image 13, the student contrasts materials to illustrate the lonely gray reality against the warmer, more beautiful dreamscape below. A sense of anxiety is seen in many of the works, but the idea truly flourishes once the student uses digital media techniques to depict solitary figures within a range of bleak environments. Within the 15 images, there's a second layer of synthesis in the specific narrative seen in eight of the finished works, which are represented in images one through 10. So those are just two examples from the sustained investigation. And of course, you can go back and look at more on your own. Now we're going to switch gears to the selected works and talk about synthesis in the selected works. Students should carefully select works that best demonstrate their skillful synthesis of materials, processes, and ideas. The submission can be a group of related works, unrelated works, or a combination of related and unrelated works. These works may also be submitted in the sustained investigation section, but they don't have to be. Here's the selected works rubric. 
which we saw earlier, just as a reminder. So we switch rubrics when we switch sections. And there is row B and score 0.5. The visual relationships among materials, processes, and ideas are clearly evident and demonstrate synthesis. Okay, so now we're going to look at some selected works. This is also on the drawing homepage. These works were also selected at the 2019 uh, reading. And there are seven samples and we're gonna look at the first two. So here's the first one. Beginning with a drawing in work one that is inspired by Vladimir Tatlin's tower, the student uses similar helix shapes and lines that plunge the viewer upward in space. Works two through five show a refined understanding of drafted architectural plans and elevations. However, the student manipulates the techniques to create drawings reminiscent of constructivist and brutalist buildings. The variety of materials used and the processes applied create dramatic, sometimes chaotic imagery that allude to different periods in Russian and Soviet history. Synthesis occurs as the student uses architectural elements that are juxtaposed or placed impractically, thus creating energetic compositions that are intended clearly to be more conceptual than practical plans for construction. The visual relationships among materials, processes, and ideas are clearly evident and demonstrate synthesis. The student masters carefully drafted shapes, gestural mark making and application of painted surfaces to reference brutalist and constructivist movements in art and design. And that is what is supported in the commentary below. Okay, let's look at one more. It's right below this. This is sample two. Selected works. Remember, they can be related, but they don't have to. In these two particular cases, the selected works are related. In work one, the student uses a lily, the symbol of Easter, newness of life and resurrection, as it is placed next to a book, presu presumably the Bible. Here's work two. In work three, poppies are drawn, which have long been used as a symbol of sleep, peace, and death. This is student work four. And this is the other student selected work, student work five. And the scoring commentary below, the visual relationships among materials, processes, and ideas are clearly evident and demonstrate synthesis. Though not required in selected works, the visual relationships among works are undoubtedly visible. Synthesis of materials, processes, and ideas is furthered as flowers are explored as symbols of religion and metaphorically considered within a cultural context. Ideas are furthered by the carefully chosen flowers to extend meaning. And then the other part I read as I scrolled. So those are two examples of selected works. Remember this year the requirement is to submit three now instead of five. Um, and if you want to look further, the links will be included in this video. So let's go back to our presentation. 
Maybe you've seen those samples and are looking for more inspiration. You might consider uh, viewing the AP Studio Art uh, and Design Student Exhibition Archives. Every year, approximately 30 works are chosen at the reading for a traveling and online ex exhibition. The next few slides provide additional student works which demonstrate synthesis this and ideas. In this work, you might be wondering a realistic painting where it looks like uh, everything is painted. In fact, there are two objects that were um, added to the surface of the painting. So in the lower left corner, the paper plate, which acted as the student's palette, and the pencil are actual objects that were attached to the surface of the painting, demonstrating a skillful use of materials, processes, and ideas. Although the current submission does not uh, support audio or video, you can still do this on your own. In this particular case, the student, um, we've added student statements about their work. And um, you can see that the student is uh, discussing the idea of connectivity by using layers of paper um, along with their figure drawing. This was the video I wanted to say, show, okay. My concentration consists of wood panels that were burned with glass. The designs are the result of my interest in abstract expressionism. This style of art reflects the physical movements the artist performs to create a composition. My inspiration is rooted with my admiration of the environment. Through abstract expressionism, I wanted to produce organic marks to stay true to the natural being of the wood and exhibit how natural products create compelling art via wood, glass, and fire. I dripped molten glass onto wood panels, let the glass burn, and then peeled it off once I was satisfied with the burn. A thicker punty gathers lots of glass. This characteristic enabled me to create loops and thin lines because the glass falls quickly. Since a thinner punty gathers smaller amounts of glass, the glass fell at a slower pace and in thicker drips. When the glass was hot enough to produce a flame, I controlled the direction of the flame to burn and fill negative space. I also used large metal tweezers to pick up and move the hot glass to different positions on the wood to add repeating patterns. I don't title my work because I don't want to skew anyone's interpretation of the pieces. Since abstract art doesn't always possess a concrete idea, I like to encourage people to express their own perceptions, what they see, feel, or think of when they view my work. AP Studio Art has granted me the opportunity to think outside of the box and make my ideas into a reality. I learn how to research the materials I need, how to take professional photos of my work, how to recover from many failed attempts, how to make connections, and how to submit my work into a museum or gallery. I feel like I've been welcomed into this new world centered around art as a result of creating the AP portfolio. Okay, so uh, although the current submission does not support audio or video, you can still do this sort of activity on your own and use the words that you speak to support your written evidence. And here's one more student example of drawing as a performance. My investigation deals with an incorporation of the gesture of drawing as a performative action conceived through the use of sculptural materials and forms that ultimately led to a resulting image. So materials, processes, and ideas, when we combine those together, we strive to achieve skillful synthesis. Here's some other places you can look for synthesis. Art 21, um, El Anatsui transforms simple materials into complex assemblages using um, resources that are typically discarded. Iris Van Herpen pushes the boundaries of fashion by combining traditional and radical materials together. Jeffrey Gibson, a painter and a sculpture producing abstract works with messages about culture. 
or Titus Kafar, a painter whose work reconfigures art history to include African-American subjects. So in summary, demystifying synthesis in the AP art and design rubrics. In this lesson, we discuss how artwork can demonstrate skillful synthesis of materials, processes, and ideas. We looked at examples of AP portfolios and student works that show successfully integrated materials, processes, and ideas. Strategies for thinking and making through sk skillful synthesis were discussed along with the specifics of the scoring rubrics emphasizing the knowledge for portfolio success. Examples of contemporary artists encouraged further exploration of best practices of the concepts of synthesis in art. So, in closing, the choices of materials, processes, and ideas used in a work are crucial. The relationships of these components within a work affects our understanding of the work. You should make deliberate, clear visual connections among materials, processes, and ideas to show the synthesis of these components. We know that not all students have access to the internet or a device. We're working on solutions to help students get what they need to show their best work. If you need mobile tools or connectivity or know someone who does, you can reach us directly to let us know at cb.org slash tech. Thank you so much for watching today. Hope to see you again.